Hi everyone, I'm Julie with Stampin' Gala, and today I'm going to show you how to create this card featuring a recessed window. To get started, I just used a piece of Whisper White cut at 11 by 4 and a quarter and scored at 5 and a half. I also did a couple of things off camera, and the first thing is I took a piece of Whisper White cardstock, which is cut at 5 by 3 and 3 quarters, and I used our fl Framelits collection, the oval set, and I used the fourth largest to cut this oval out. After that, I ran it through the Big Shot a second time with the softly falling embossing folder. Now, you don't want to do that in reverse because if you did the softly falling first, when you ran it through the second time with the Framelit, it would flatten your little dots here, which you don't want to do. Next, I took a piece of our Dazzling Diamonds Glimmer Paper, which is cut at three by four, and I used the next largest framelit, which is the fifth largest, and cut that out. Try to get this as centered as possible. I also added dimensionals on the back of here, and I already took these four off. Now what I'm gonna attempt to do is, is center this over top, to give it the recessed window. And believe it or not, this is harder than it looks on camera. Okay. Next, we're gonna do some stamping. I like to use our piercing mat because the stamp I'm using is photopolymer, and we're using the Butterfly Basic stamp set in this image right here. You can tell my stamp is really loved. We're using the Versamark, and you're gonna ink this up really well. And we'll stamp right on here. Okay. Bring in the embossing powder, and I like to keep mine in a little tub. I tend to use embossing powder quite a bit. Give it a nice flick, and it has this opaque finish. I'm gonna turn on your heat tool and put it on high and heat this up. Now you'll see that it'll turn from the opaque finish to the shiny, glossy look. They're starting to turn. I hope you can see that on camera. These heat tools get really, really hot, so you wanna be careful not to burn yourself or burn the paper. In addition to that, you want to make certain that you get the whole image heated in turn. There we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some watercoloring, just ever so lightly. So I'm using Melon Mambo. And we're going to just use the top of the cap in our aqua banner. And I'm just gonna add some color in here. And it's really easy to know where to do this because Stampin' Up! has provided these lines for us. Okay. And while I'm painting this, I do wanna tell you that um, another tip for you, when using your framelits, I put a label on all of them telling me how many I have in that set. So, for instance, right here, so when I put these away, I know that I have seven and I need to make sure I have seven when I put it away. Now you're gonna clean off your brush or your aqua painter and I'm gonna go into the green and I'm doing this ever so lightly. Okay. 
Okay, that'll do it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull back this frame. We're going to add some snail on the back here, just a little bit. Oops. And now we're going to center this over top. There you go. Now to make it even, I added the dimensionals right in the corners as well. Get those off. They're covered a little bit so it makes it a little more tricky. We're going to bring in a piece of pink pirouette and this is cut at five and a quarter by four and we're going to center this right over top. Okay, so we have that. We'll pull back in our card base and add some snail here. And add this. Another thing I did off camera was I took the inside and I always like to double the inside as well. I'm, I took a piece of pink pirouette cardstock which is cut at five and a quarter by four and a piece of whisper white which is cut at five by three and three quarters. I stamped the image on here as well with Versamark and white powder so I hope you can see that on camera. It's real faint, but it adds a really nice touch. We're going to add some adhesive, and we'll put this down as well. There you go. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I have a strip of scrap paper. It's just a half inch wide and we're going to stamp a little thanks and I'm using hair pizzazz as my green ink so we'll just stamp this right here I'm using the banner punch and I like to slide this in here and give it a little flag on the end Bring my card back in. I'm going to put a little bit of snail here. Let me measure it and see where I think I'll cut it off right here. And we'll put a little snail on this side. Oops, I have another piece of pink pirouette. We're going to connect these two together. Oops. Put some snail down. Put this across. Now we need, may need to trim this up a little bit more, but that's okay. And now I'm going to show you how to make the bow. So what you do is you have this about two inches from your baby finger. We're going to do a figure eight. And I'm going to bring it out to about there and cut it. So we have the figure eight. Now I'm going to take the end of this, put it in between my fingers, and come through there. And now what I'm going to do is put it over top that and through the little loop. <laughs> I 
again this is a little more difficult on camera okay so now what I'm gonna do is pull this tight And there's your bow. We'll just trim off the ends, and I always like to trim them on an angle. Okay, we'll add a glue dot. And add it to your card. Now you might want to turn it this way so you well let's see that's good now what I'd like to do is take the iced rhinestone and put that right in the center so there you have it now if you would rather have an Easter card I did, off camera, stamp a Happy Easter, and this is just how it would look. So, isn't that cute? Anyway, thank you for watching. You can get more inspiration on my blog at www.stampinggala.com. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.